Okay, welcome all to the October 16th Environmental Advisory Council meeting. Um, we uh, have minutes from our September meeting uh, that uh, you all uh, have read and uh, I ask for a approval, a vote of approval for the minutes or any comments. <coughs> Okay, all hands approve. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, no public for comment, so we'll get to announcements. Uh, we have some uh, interesting presentations coming up uh, this month and uh, to the end of the year. Uh, starting Saturday, October 20th, uh, actually the Radnor Conservancy tree giveaway is scheduled at the Radnor Township building uh, this Sunday, excuse me, Saturday. Uh, oh, it's Saturday. Oh, no, it's Sunday, yeah, okay. Sunday, excuse me, I got it down wrong. Sunday uh, from 9 to 12 noon, uh, so public can register uh, at the Radnor Conservancy website and uh, pick up uh, a tree, a free tree for planting in your yard. And these are uh, native trees to Pennsylvania. Uh, Thursday, October 24th, our EAC lecture series continues with How to Recycle in Radnor. Uh, Charles Noble from uh, Republic Services will be uh, presenting on this subject at 6 p.m. here in the Radnor Shire room. Saturday, October 26, uh, at the Radnor Financial Center, 9 to 12 p.m. Uh, anything with a plug, recycling day, and paper shredding event. Uh, residents are encouraged to pre-register on Eventbrite. Uh, no large appliances, smoke detectors, or projection cathode ray TVs. Thursday, December 5th, the EAC lecture series continues with a presentation by Michael Wheelbacher, who presented excellent, although sobering, presentation on microplastics in September. He is, on December 5th, presenting uh, Wild Philly, the extraordinary nature of our backyard at 6 p.m. here in the Radnor Shire room. So I'm looking forward to that because in my retirement I get to observe my backyard and there's all kinds of critters uh, that I have never noticed before. Um, Saturday, November 16th, uh, Radnor Memorial Library is hosting a no-buy clothing swap in the Windsor Room. Uh, you can drop off uh, clothes, uh, women and men's uh, gently used shirts, pants, coats, sweaters, dresses, skirts, jumpsuits, jeans, and shorts, uh, but no underwear, bathing suits, uh, socks, or shoes. Uh, the intent is then for uh, drop-off of these items between October 20th and November 15th, and uh, you receive a ticket for each item. No more than 10 items are to be dropped off by any individual. And then on November 16th, uh, there is a clothing swap uh, at the Radnor Memorial Library. Okay, ongoing business. And is the drop off at the library? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, it's at the Windsor room. I, I, well, at least that's where the swap is. Uh, drop off, they'll 
inform you when you get there. Um, so ongoing business. The uh, updates from municipal energy conservation and electrification are quite uh, interesting. Uh, um, Melissa Kahn, our communications and sustainability uh, director, informed me today that the township is participating in uh, Delaware Valley's resource uh, DVRPC's energy benchmarking program, which assists municipalities with establishing a benchmarking ordinance for certain buildings, such as commercial, institutional, multifamily uh, buildings. This is basically a way a building owner can compare their energy usage uh, to a standard uh, established for buildings of similar square footage and age and uh, see uh, how, whether they could uh, improve their uh, energy conservation in the building. And eventually there may well be a um, ordinance requiring benchmarking for all owners of large buildings. Uh, DVRPC will be holding educational meetings with township staff and the EAC and the green team uh, on benchmarking. And uh, these meetings will be announced uh, in the future. Uh, municipal EV charging stations, uh, there's still a delay in uh, getting the EV charging station fully operational as uh, the township is required to use an existing transformer. Uh, however, uh, the Board of Commissioners uh, two days ago approved the purchase of a Chevy EV Blazer for the police department. So this is a, uh, a cruiser uh, police car that uh, has been used by many other uh, police departments uh, in the area. Um, building energy system upgrades, roof replacement and installation of solar panels at the township and public's work buildings is in the design stage uh, led by Practical Energy Solutions. Uh, the firm that uh, performed the energy audits of our municipal buildings. So uh, we are uh, going to have solar power in this building uh, in the coming years, which is really exciting. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. Okay, yeah. Um, LED street light installations. Uh, there's 1,200 LED street lights already installed that are eligible for PICO rebates to the township. Uh, the remaining lights that are to be upgraded include several for uh, homeowners associations and decorative fixtures in the downtown Wayne area. And lastly, uh, a MORE grant, that is a municipal opportunities for retrofits and energy efficiency uh, is being applied for uh, by Melissa uh, with, uh, in conjunction with Practical Energy Solutions. So some of the costs uh, for upgrading our municipal buildings could be defrayed by this grant. Do you have uh, I think you could go online. That, as I recall, there was a fixed amount. Um, let's see. Oh, mulchless native perennial plantings. plantings. Uh, Sven, hopefully, was going to be here to update us. Uh, as I understand, uh, the perennial plantings have been uh, put in the ground at... Uh, the municipal parking lot uh, behind the post office. So that is a great uh, piece of news. Just, uh, just to clarify, can you please, um, the one on 
on South South Wayne Avenue. Or was it a? He said he was. I, I, I emailed him. Okay. He said he was going to make it. I said, "Can okay. you sit here?" He came the last meeting, but he came, and it was the building was locked. He'd already left, so I told him <laughs> he had to get here by between six and seven. Right. Okay. So why don't we punt this item to give him more time to get here? Um, public education. <clears throat> Uh, Eugenia, uh, do you have anything to say to that? Uh, to the upcoming lectures? Uh, well, the lectures uh, in 2025, uh, the tentative lectures. I know you had uh, a contact, a Villanova professor of environmental science, uh, Jen, yeah, Jen a, Santoro. Uh, yeah, Jen Santoro. She's on Shade Tree with me, and she would love to speak. She gets very busy in the spring, so she said, I just need to know the date. Um, and I guess we won't know the date till November. Right. Dates, or dates. But if she can't come, um, I mean, good grief, there's a whole faculty there. I'll see if she can recommend somebody else. I haven't even said what subject or, you know, I wanted to have her s suggest some subjects. So it looks like winter would be the best time for her to speak, perhaps? Yeah, January or February or March. In After that, I think they get busy with you know, finals. exams and graduation. Sure. Um, um, I also was in touch with the Office of Sustainability at Villanova to hear just what they have accomplished there. Uh, and it's a wide ranging uh, things from green roofs to solar panels. Uh, and uh, so uh, that would be a nice supplement to Jen's presentation, I'm sure. Um, and we also have Aqua, right? Yes. I, uh, Dave Rustay is Director of Water Quality Environmental Compliance at Aqua PA, uh, is uh, available to speak on the efforts that Aqua has taken to purify our water, especially in light of uh, the polyfluorinated alkyl substances that are unfortunately rampant in some parts of uh, this area. Uh, and so uh, that will be a very important and uh, informative uh, lecture. Will we also combine that with talk about what we're doing in Radnor? Remember there was uh, the, uh, blanking out the pond over here, the lake over oh. here. Or we don't want to get involved in that. I, I'd said, why don't we hear about that? And somebody on the committee said, doesn't they didn't want to? But uh, uh, it's great to have Aqua to talk about what they're doing. But right. should we have somebody from the township say? Well, or is that going to be too long? Or step on? Uh, yeah, it'll depend on on how long Dave uh, would like to speak. Uh, so uh, we can certainly combine it uh, if it. Okay. Uh, time allows, and we should think maybe more about that uh, with regard to the township's efforts. Yeah, for in yeah this our area. own efforts, not just the public utility of Aqua. Because right. I can tell you, you're talking about Finmore Pond. That's it, yeah. It's amazing because I walk down there almost every morning, and it was just horrible. It was just, there was no, it was just covered Gross. with this, you know, like algae, thick, mm -hmm. mossy looking stuff. And it was really, the lake was dying. I mean, the, animal, yep. the birds, the ducks, nothing could, and they brought in this big machine that literally like came and skimmed all of that off. Uh -huh. Then they had, I guess the township came and picked it up and you know, took it away. And now the lake looks beautiful, the pond I should say, looks beautiful. It's you know, all huh. clear now. See, I the, think that would ducks, be great. To have and some before and after pictures too. Yes. If she, ha I forget the woman's name. Who's in charge of it? Or, what is it? Okay, I think that would be great to have yeah, some. No, it's, it's Park, have Parks a Radnor and, person here for the last five or ten minutes. Yeah, and Parks say, and Rec. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and say what? Look yeah. at the before and look at the after. Okay. And how did it get this way? And how did we clean it up? And where did we dispose the stuff they they dredged out? Just a little bit of a. Yeah. Here's an example. Good idea. Right. It won't take up a full lecture, so if No, but we'd have we her maybe could. talk the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to contact her? Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you.
But we don't have a date for that yet either. For the, no, for the no, we're schedule. waiting for the uh, schedule. Um, another was uh, I thought of as practical energy solutions and uh, could speak or the township engineer or whoever could speak on progress in the municipal building energy upgrades. So this could be something planned uh, later than this coming year. It's just something to keep an eye on uh, as uh, progress uh, takes hold. What about we, you know, the person that we met at the fall festival <coughs> that does the, like the mulch of the pine needle? Oh, the pine, pine needle mulch, pine needle mulch, yes, yes. Because he has a whole yes. lecture on mulching. Okay. And I think I sent you the information, but I can yes, you send did. it okay. if you need me to. Uh, I think I have that. This is, uh, yeah, definitely a sustainable way of uh, mulching. Right. Uh, far more, um, yeah, mid-Atlantic pine straw mulch. Yes, that's it. Um, okay. Well, I'll leave you, Carol, to contact them when the time arises. Okay, but we'll have to... Uh, we don't have a date. That, that would be in 2025. Right. Um, Do we know when we'll get dates? When does the board... They meet in November. Are they the first week, second week, third week? Well, Kathy, <coughs> I've heard November date? is when we'll have the schedule available dates for 2025. Okay. But do they, when do they meet? Well, the dates available for EAC lecture series. When do they meet? Are they the first week of every month or the second week? Yeah. Okay, so twice. So we hopefully. Okay. Okay, so we should, I assume it would be an agenda item, so it's something to look for for on the upcoming, I mean, for all of us on the board here to check <coughs> the uh, upcoming uh, agenda for the BOC to uh, know when they're going to uh, approve the schedule. It's really just the availability of this room so we can schedule lectures. That's all it is. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, the Radnor News Community Newsletter. Uh, there's many ways to call this magazine. <laughs> so I put in all the, all the names that are on the cover page. Uh, Eugenia, um, uh, congratulations. We got the fall issue. With oh, you did? English Ivy. Well, Danger to Trees. But uh, did you get your, I haven't gotten mine yet. Have you received uh, No, no, but oh, okay. I, I presume we've got it loaded in the oh, galleys. Yeah. No, and weeks ago. I, I, yeah. it's a little, I'm surprised it hasn't come out no, yet. No, I haven't, no. Any day. Right. Uh, now for the winter issue, yep. uh, I did send out an October 9th email to EAC members mm -hmm. with an updated draft of an introduction to Radnor Township EAC. So, uh, Eugenia, you said November 22nd is the uh, deadline, and so let's see if we can uh, have yeah. everybody review this draft and comment one more time on it. Uh, it is long, and uh, it may well come back to us from the publisher or the editor uh, to shorten it, but the sooner we get it to them, the better. So please. Yeah, but do we send it to them? Okay. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's an October 9th email. Yeah, I got I've, it. And then I think, Ray, you made some changes, right? And so, yeah. uh, 
so it's, that's the one I'm going to use until I hear otherwise, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send it out again okay. uh, for you all to look at. Thank you. Um, right. The, the re remit of the EAC was actually provided from the uh, resolution, the township resolution back in 2008, I believe, when the EAC was formed. So that became the uh, core text for this uh, article. Um, Eco-friendly yard signs. Has anyone gotten a call or email of interest? Okay, that's too bad. Um, we should probably advertise that more. Um, I'm wondering too, I was thinking the other day, can we, um, does anybody like me get that email every day from PATH? Is that what it's called, PATH? It's got five or six stories of Anybody get that email? Oh, Patch. 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 Radner yeah. Patch. Yeah, I wonder if we can advertise something like that. No, yes. Put something like that in there. I can call them and find out. Okay. Um, Good idea, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's just, it'd be more interesting than some of these. <laughs> Thank you, Eugenia. Let's see what they say. I'm sure they will. Um, I wonder if we have uh, electronic imagery from there. Donnell, Donnell would have that. Of the, um, of the flag. Oh, yeah, I think we have that. Because um, there was the article that it was in one of these Radnor News yeah. community newsletters. Has a uh, picture. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. There's also another magazine I've been in contact with. I don't know if you all get it. It's sort of thicker and glossier, and it just came today again, called Suburban Life. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get that? So I've been in touch with the editor, sent him some examples of what we've used, and he promptly went on vacation, but I think he's back, so I'll follow up with him. That okay. seems to come out with more regularity. About the eco-friendly yard signs, you followed him? Follow uh, up no, with I, him. Sent him, I sent him the English Ivy thing and something else okay. Shade Tree had done just to show him what, what we do. Right. Good. But if we, I mean, listen, if we can get into that, I mean, I think the best time to advertise the eco-friendly um, yard signs is after, after the first of the year when people start to think about spring again. Yes. Yes. We'll see if we can get it in patch in suburban life. Okay. Um, okay. Um, also, there's the Radnor High School newspaper, if you would like to advertise to maybe younger Radnor um, residents. Oh. That would be great. Yeah. And I could, I know this, the editors, so I could easily just ask them to perhaps put in like a little like blurb or article yeah. about just something. Fact. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing big. Nothing that big. would be great. Yeah. Okay, I could send you the text describing mm -hmm. it or yeah. uh, if we have boilerplate text on eco-friendly yard somewhere. I think um, probably Donnell has, uh, Donnell has the best right. thing to send. Yeah. This is the Radnor High School newspaper? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quote, quote unquote? Um, <laughs> there's, it's, an, it's online. It's called The Radnorite. And the Radnorite. articles are published, mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, I think weekly. Oh. I, I can't remember the exact day they come out, but mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great idea, thank you. Mm -hmm. That is a great idea. Thank you, Hayden. Um, good. Let's see. Dan, can we go back to lectures for one second? Sure. Um, I think Melissa, I'm having to go through my foggy mind now. I think Melissa, I had written and said, could we send out to every Radnor staff person, every board member, notice of our lectures? And I believe she did that. I'm going to ask her this week if she can send out a reminder again, maybe Friday or Monday for the one coming up. People forget. But I mean, how many bodies are in this building? Quite a few who may mm -hmm. want to join. OK. Who's going to be here to do the introduction and all of that? 
I will be available, um, well, I'm actually not for the October 24th lecture. Um, I'll be out of town, so good point. <laughs> will somebody here be, pre uh, be able to make the Thursday, October 24th lecture to introduce uh, uh, Charles Noble from Republic Services. Let me check. I was, I was hoping to try and come. Let me check. I mean, if you're if you can't, I mean, I possibly could, but do you know him? I don't. I'll need yeah. like A background because I did it once before when we had um, you know the refillery, but I got. I think uh, Donnell gave me like the, yeah. the, so I had the background on uh -huh. what to say. Right. No, you do but need you, a bio. Do you want to do it, Eugenia? Um, uh, no, if you want to. I mean, I'm happy to, unless you want to do it. <coughs> I, I, again, I think it was Donnell or Lisa who, si who signed him up. Well, maybe we'll um, see if they're planning to do it. Right, okay. I'll, uh, email. I think it was Donnell. I think it was. Yeah, hopefully she'll be around. Yeah, we could check with her and by default I'll do it <laughs> if, she, if she's... Okay. Okay, thank you, Carol. All right. Yes, I will be uh, <laughs> around for the December 5th uh, lecture by uh, Michael Wheelbacher on Wild Philly, so. Uh, he is excellent, too. I, oh, I my. urge you all to try and attend that. When yes. he came and spoke about um, microplastics, yeah. it's fascinating. Yes, it was. I mean, it wasn't just the subject, it was his, you know, uh, he's great. I yeah. urge everybody to try and come to the wildlife one. Well organized. And yep. Uh, in, informative yep. and well delivered. Excellent. Um, no, that's a good point you brought up, Carol. Thank you <laughs> about introductions. Uh, let's see. Okay, new business. Gas lever, a gas leaf blower phase out. Uh, this is a we're really on a fact-finding mission as an EAC on how to go about uh, phasing out gas leaf blowers uh, from our township. And uh, very fortunately, Ellie Kearns, the communications director at Penn Environment, has organized a Zoom call or webinar where people who are interested in this can call in and there be a, uh, a group discussion of what people have learned and suggestions on a way forward. Uh, for example, do we go township by township or borough by borough or do we work together across townships uh, to uh, phase out gas leaf blowers? Uh, or even at the county level. Um, unfortunately, uh, at the We Conserve EAC fall gathering that I went to October 5th, uh, there wasn't uh, anybody there who uh, could talk about it uh, in, for their own township uh, beyond being concerned like, like us. So I think this webinar uh, will be very helpful uh, to devise a, a way to uh, go forward. Uh, I want to remind our EAC that, that uh, uh, Donnell did provide a spreadsheet uh, for us to put down stakeholders, folks who would be affected uh, directly by a phase out of gas leaf blowers, uh, particularly 
uh, landscape companies, uh, big institutions with extensive uh, uh, lawns and trees, uh, uh, and uh, also uh, residents. So uh, please keep uh, a look out for that. I will send the link again to all EAC members uh, for you to uh, read and, and update it. Um, okay. Now, uh, something that came up from a concerned resident in uh, August was uh, land development occurring, housing development that was occurring down in South Spring Mill Road. And uh, so I, I got interested in just understanding uh, how residents are notified of pending uh, uh, land development in their neighborhoods. And uh, so what I'd like to do is arrange a meeting with our township engineer, Steve Norsini, and the director of community development uh, for the EAC to uh, learn about this notification process uh, so that we can uh, uh, be aware uh, ourselves of when development uh, projects are being planned and uh, in our in our township. And I'll be talking with uh, uh, Kathy uh, about this uh, tomorrow morning. Friday. Uh, Friday morning, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> this is my email again, yeah. Um, anything else, folks? Well. Thank you, sorry about that. Um, with regard to meeting with Steve Norsini and, and Kevin Kachansky, who's head of community development, yeah. um, how soon would you like that to happen and uh, how many people do you want at the meeting? Uh, well, ideally, it, it, I've never done this before, uh, so I would figure it could be a, a Zoom call uh, where we work out the date, that seems to be the most difficult thing, yeah. is to get maximum attendance from the EAC. Uh, but uh, I would say as soon as possible, uh, that is when Steve and uh, the Director of Community Development and you said the Shade Tree Commission. No, I said, I did not say Shade Tree. I said Kevin Kachansky of Community Development. I thought you suggested Shade Tree as well, because they are involved in the uh, I'm not opposed. I don't, I don't mean that. I just meant right, right now. I, when you said Steve Norsini and then I had the person for community development, I said Kevin Kachansky, who was right. community development. Okay. Right. I thought you meant right now what was said. I'm sorry. No, but this is something that I, I w would like to have happen. And uh, if you can facilitate that, mm -hmm. Kathy, that would be great. Uh, and it, yes, it would be. It's been on the docket now for over a month, so. <laughs> We could uh, do it. Uh, so you would prefer it to be a, uh, a Zoom call? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And Steve's idea would be to have the EAC informed, uh, better <laughs> informed on this notification process so we can address uh, any residents' concerns uh, often after the fact when development has progressed and they suddenly realize it's happening. Um, I would also like to uh, 
somehow advertise the notification process so that residents are aware of just in broad outline of what the process is so they can be more alert if they suspect development in their area where to look in the township website for planning committee meetings and similar meetings. We used to, we haven't anymore, and I say we, my husband and I, we haven't in a while at least, used to get notifications that there was going to be a hearing for property A, B, C because they want to add, subtract, develop, whatever. Do they not send those out anymore? I used to get them too. Yeah, I don't know if we don't get them or just there's whoever developed where we live, there's no more. So, you know, just kind of formal looking letters that said, you know, property 224 Smith Street. We'll be having a hearing. Yeah, you get notified within a certain radius of a planning project that's happening. So if you're, and I'm sorry, I can't remember what the circumference is, but you do get notified. And obviously the planning commission has standing meetings yeah. right um, so and of course any resident can attend those right Steve said uh, the Planning Commission uh, meetings would uh, notify properties within 500 feet of the pending development uh, of course that's not very far right I mean if you have a big block at the end of the street or nearby that's going to be suddenly mowed down and have five houses put up right that could impact you too 500 and feet doesn't really do much that's right and and the concerned citizen was talking about several properties up yeah. and down south spring mill road the main concern uh was uh water uh storm water uh which was already a problem and then in when the they area. take down trees and then taking down the trees just what was the plan for stormwater management uh, for the developments on these properties. Do we have still a stormwater committee? We used to, we used to have, because so, I, I, and I looked on the um, website the other day and I didn't. I don't think we do, or it's not active. It's one or the other, but it's, I've okay. never met with them and I, so I don't really yeah. think it's We happening. used to have one, I remember, I can't remember how long ago, but somebody asked me about it the other day and I thought that's funny and I looked it up and a blank. Yeah, I don't think that it's. It was probably for the MS4 stormwater plan that has been put together for the township several years ago. For the houses on the other side of the. Well, track? just a general oh. uh, stormwater plan, uh, yeah. and it, you know, with that will require funding for projects down the road. But yeah. I, I think there is a MS4 plan for the township already drawn up. They have such trouble with storm water. I can't think of the road. On the other side of the Wayne train station, all those yes. 1920 houses. Yes. And they just have. Yeah. yeah. Gulf Creek goes, yeah. Uh, yeah. comes out from under well, and there used North to be Wayne a, Avenue there. A big, huge, what is it, a notorium there. You see that sign. I mean, yes. so it's just all been drained. I mean, mm. All right. But off the subject, but I just wondered, was there not a storm water committee anymore? Um, okay, so uh, Kathy and I will talk about this uh, uh, tomorrow about uh, talking with uh, the, uh, excuse me, Friday, uh, talking with the township engineer and uh, director of community development. I have Sven on the phone. He can give an update on the, he's, he just called. <laughs> Uh, okay, you can hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Sorry for not uh, being there. I actually planned for it, but my my daughter comes from college home for the weekend, and we are just about to have dinner. So I totally forgot about it because I picked her up on the on the airport, and then I drove her home. And then you see when you unpack everything and hello, hello, you you con I completely yes, she lost it. Yeah. However, here's the update. Yeah. 
So we put uh, the plans in on Friday with around about uh, 10 volunteers from uh, a company that uh, Ember organized. And uh, she and me, we put up all the tools and um, in the end it was successful. It took significantly longer than we thought. We had planned for three hours, but um, the, the two of us were there still working after nearly five hours. And the reason was that the soil after no rain over the last weeks, it was basically like uh, like concrete. Yes. So I had to use my pickaxe and a large spade to try to loosen up the ground. So um, just digging the holes was, um, let's say, taking too long. And of course, what we also saw is that this, the soil quality is not really suited for, for plants because it's basically clay with gravel mixed in. Uh, in. So I would say uh, my lesson learned is uh, next time we planted it, maybe less plants and more volunteers or different conditions. That is a prerequisite because mm -hmm. now we did it, of course, because it was planned with this company like that. But I would say um, my insight was that uh, it actually takes much longer and then you have to really uh, calculate with the weather. But of course, we couldn't know that it wasn't raining for such a long time. Yeah. And um, I had my garden hose with me and uh, watered the plant afterwards with uh, also a volunteer. And then uh, Ricky from the township, he uh, promised to uh, water again uh, since uh, we don't expect rain for the next days or even weeks until November when uh, it's supposed not to rain. So S Sven, uh, uh, just con confirm uh, the location of your plantings. Was the municipal and parking lot? Yeah, that was on the Wayne parking lot. And the plants are selected with Chanticleer. They should survive the conditions there, but uh, of course it's not optimal overall. Uh, yeah. But that's only, you find only out, you can only find out once you dig into the ground what you have there. So, um, Well, thank yeah. you. Are, are you contemplating other locations for plantings? Yeah, I think that is something in the next town uh, meeting, maybe we should discuss what the best concept is. There's, of course, one option is we, we select better suited areas for more planting. However, there is, of course, paperwork and guarantees involved and waivers to be signed wherever you do this on public land or on township land. So I think uh, another concept would be uh, to upgrade or significantly increase the plant donations and basically do a decentralized concept in with households that want to plant perennials because a bee or an insect of course doesn't mind it whether it's on public land or in your in your backyard and that's something i want to discuss uh, with the eac and i discussed it also with amber what's the most efficient way to get as many plants as we can into the grounds because whenever you do it now, like like we did, Amber and me, you de you are dependent on volunteers and a lot of other conditions that need to be met to be able to to do that. And I am now after this experience, I'm wondering if this is really the most efficient way of doing it. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So, I will be at the. Uh, I think I will be at the tree giveaway. Uh, not at eight, but a little later uh, to volunteer there. And if I meet you there, then we can also exchange ideas about how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, for uh, Sunday, October twentieth. Um, yeah, it's the next Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I won't be there. But uh, uh, Carol, I uh, may be there part of the time. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. That's great. But okay. I would say the good news is we got a lot of support from, from Steve and Ricky from the township. Um, we've now made, the let's say, one of these experiences. The, the plants are in the grounds. Hopefully they grow well and it should look nice uh, next year. And then I think we can take it from there in spring. Great. Yeah. Can I ask you, Sven? Um, so when I was at the South Wayne parking lot the other day, it looked like there was a lot of grasses there. Was, were these plants put in places where the grasses weren't or in between the grass? I, I'm unclear exactly exactly where they went at South Wayne parking lot. Could you hear that, Sven? 
yeah, where did the plans go in? So it is uh, where it's exactly this parking lot where a lot of grasses were planted. So we planted them in between the grasses. Okay. So um, Chris Felbacher from the uh, Chantichir Garden, he came out and he looked uh, jointly at the grasses. So many of the grasses are already dying because what we saw is that the, the, when it was when the grasses were planted, they didn't go full into the ground. So you have mm. to think the, the group is out in the marsh. So it, 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 exactly in the center part of the garden, that group of the grasses were already dead. Other grasses, and oh. we made sure that the volunteers know how to dig to get the, the root even into the ground. You're, bre you're breaking up. We're losing, up. we're losing you, Sven. We're losing you. But, that is something that we can get to the wrong thing. But you see, one answer, third answer is yes. Okay. Sven, you're, you're breaking up. We're losing you, Sven. He doesn't, he doesn't hear us. Okay, I'd hang up. All right, Sven, we appreciate the update. Enjoy your daughter. Yes, thank you very much, and I, I apologize for not being there. It's it's really, a, let's say, a miss on my side. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. You've been busy. We appreciate the update. Thank you. And thank we see each other maybe on Sunday and then for the next meeting. Yeah? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, one other piece of business is the EAC membership. Uh, we're down one member, and I am personally am aware of two people who are interested uh, in becoming members of the EAC. So uh, both of them are aware <coughs> of the process for applying. Uh, so this is uh, a uh, agenda item hopefully that we can act on by our next meeting in November. So was Sven one of them? Yes, yes. And there was a, another individual who I uh, put in touch with uh, through Melissa with uh, Peggy. Um, what's, what's her last name? You mean Dr. Myers? You mean Maggie Myers? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do, we, do we have their resumes? Uh, no, I, I was waiting for her to submit her CV and uh, through the, pr the proper channels. So we'll watch this space. And but do we propose one to the township? Do we say, you know, of the two, this one seems the stronger candidate, then propose it to the township, or they interview both and say, you're getting this person. Yes. Yes to the second or the first? The second. That's my understanding. So the BOC chooses? Yes. Ah, okay. Huh. I don't know. All right. Yeah, I would, I would certainly have them both apply yeah. and, and go through the process. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I, I remember my process took way too long. Yes. All right, I will uh, ensure both Sven and uh, uh, Maggie, or, or the uh, the other applicant. So, uh, I th um, so is, I thought there were. So now that you've added Sven, I thought there were that would make it three applicants. Am I am I wrong about that? I'm only aware of two applicants. Okay. Maybe you are. Um, uh, maybe I misheard the name. It sounded like a, a woman's name to me. Right. So if the person who told me said Sven, I did not hear a Sven. I would have recognized it right away. Okay. So I either misheard the person or there's someone else in addition. All right. Well, I'll CC everyone on my email uh, with the individual to the, in my email to the individuals mm -hmm. to remind okay. them to apply. Shouldn't we? I mean, every committee have the ability to say here's our recommendation or, or here's our rating of one, two, and three. That's just not the way it works. Are you on? Um, that's a good idea. I, 
don't know how this process came about um, or why it is the way it is, but it's, they are board selections. Um, I'm not saying that the okay. EAC or any other of the you know parks and rec. There's all these all these different committees. That, that's how, that's what how I got in. I mean, except I, had, I was the only one when I got in, so there was nobody else. But I mean, I had to meet with the commissioners. I had to submit my right. CV. Right, right. I had to do all of that, and yeah. then I met with them. No, that's not what I'm questioning. I did that too. I'm just saying, if there are three people, and we go through their resumes, any any committee, shade tree, mm -hmm. anything else, shouldn't as a committee who's going to be working with these people be able to say. Here are priority of choices, or here's our or right. person, rather than the board of commissioners just saying, T "You're taking this one." I'm sure they're all good, There's, but I'm just saying, you know, the idea of it's like an arranged marriage. <laughs> here, right. here you go. Some of them work, some of them don't. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it's a crapshoot. No, I, I don't. Th yeah, assuming we can get access to the CVs before the uh, decision is made, we can at least know the candidates at that level and, yeah. and make a strong recommendation to the BOC. I will ask yeah. uh, Dr. Myers Thank you. about the procedure. I'm sure they're all good, but just, right. I, you know, I, yeah. here, here's somebody we're giving you. Okay. Anything else, folks? All right, it's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, and attendees. Safe.